paper. Miles and miles and miles of paper. Sheaves and rings and passes and stacks. Is this what I went to college for? Is this why I learned sonnet form, Shakespearean, and Petrarchan, thank you very much, and became proficient and gifted and wise beyond my years, and studied Latin, and glanced at Greek, and memorized the lymphatic system, and kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, KPC. Oh, for goodness sake. And honed my wit, and read Edmund Burke, and translated Sententia from Catalyst, and studied Titian, Caravaggio, and Da Vinci, and took a lesson flute, or flout, and abided by men's silent horizontal, even when it would have been just as nice not to wash or entertain or impure thought, so I could be inundated and embargoed and generally assaulted by paper, paper, pillars and columns and towers of paper. It's not that messy, Gidger. Oh, Mr. John Pace Seaver. Have you found the tickets? Found the tickets. Found the tickets. We're searching for a proverbial needle in a real haystack. This is the way a new office is supposed to look. If your mother could see with this place, if my why, mother why could see with this place. Why is the needle proverbial and the haystack real? Are you trying to sidetrack me into literature? I'm just picking up on your own figure. No, Mr. John K. Seaver. I am sorry, but I cannot search and lecture at one and the same time. For you to understand my figure, as you so pedantically call it, you would have to undertake a course of Asiatic studies last Damn, week. Damn, where does one put theater tickets? That depends. What's the play? Faintly in my heart. Oh, <laughs> and we know what hit rhymes with don't we? Everyone I've spoken to. Well, they're wrong. It's actually predictable. Predictable, predictable, predictable. You know what's going to happen from the second the maid enters with the bowl of roses. Tickets are impossible to come by. When did you even see it? See it? Oh, I have no interest in seeing it. Seeing it might get in the way of my opinion. Uh, the <laughs> artists survive with you watching them. Uh, what I mean is... Have you read what I gave you? What you gave me? Yes, what I gave you. Well, I've been. Yes, I see. I gave it a, a glance, of course. A glance? No, not so much a glance, really. I peered at it. And what did you think? I liked it very much. Which did you prefer? I liked them very much. The free verse or the sonnet? Well, of course, I favor free verse these days. It was prose. They were? It was. It was a single piece of flowing prose of which your total ignorance does not prevent you from having an opinion of two poems. How do the arts survive with you peering at them? I'm so sorry, Kitcher. I'm awfully busy these days. Hang out your shingle in this publishing game and, well, look what happens. What is this farce we're playing? I beg pardon? What am I to you, Mr. Sebring? My employee. And what does that mean exactly? I tremble in your presence. <laughs> As well you should. As well you should. Come on, old man, he's up a bit. I am your employee in a business that does not exist. How can you say it doesn't exist? Look around you. Hmm? What do you see? Paper. And that's the realest thing there is. What have you published? Oh, get you. No, no, no. Tell me. Recite your list. My list is blank. My list is blank. Hmm. Type it for your memoirs, perhaps? Everyone starts somewhere. I am the flunky of a man with a messy office. That is me and Toto. Kidger. <laughs> you are not personal with me, and you're not professional with me. We are nothing to each other. I hold you in very high esteem, Gidger. Is Gidger my first name or my last? <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> I said, is Gidger my first name or my last? Why, it never occurred to me it was either. <laughs> it never occurred to me it was your name at all. I thought it was just what we called you, sort of in lieu of a name. <laughs> how are you? I beg your pardon. I said, how are you? You mean physically? Yes. <laughs> all right, yes. Because of my mental state, I've given you a fair account. Yes, then yes. How are you physically? Not bad. And you? Quite well, thank you. Hmm. How's your dog? Despicable. Is he? <laughs> yes. That sweet thing? A low, irredeemable creature. I'm sure not. Don't contradict me. I wouldn't. <laughs> he is utterly lacking in the quality of empathy. No. Every night it's the same thing. I return home to my garret after my day of this, and I ask him dutifully, would you like to be walked? And invariably he replies, yes, I like very much to be walked. <laughs> Never once does he inquire whether I really feel like walking. Never <laughs> once has he picked up on my mood, would you like to be walked? Yes, I like very much to be walked. Garish mandibles, dripping leash, tail swishing like a bobbin, like a shuttlecock, the long thought machine of perpetual motion. 
Would you like to be warm? Yes, I'd very much to be warm. <laughs> Would you like to be fed? Yes, I'd very much to be fed. Well, maybe I don't feel like it. Maybe I need a drink and a foot rub. No, no. Would you like to be warm? Yes, I'd very much to be warm. Would you like to be fed? Yes, I'd very much to be. A dog's life? You know who leads a dog's life? A dog's master. <laughs> I'm going to have him killed. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> I'm seriously considering it. <laughs> you wouldn't kill. What's his name? Sir Lancelot. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes I call him Lance. Sometimes I call him Sir. Sometimes I call him Lancey. Sometimes I call him La. Sometimes I call him Salat. Sometimes I call him Slut. <laughs> Sometimes I call him Lut. Sometimes I call him Sla. Sometimes I call him Ut. <laughs> With each new name, I hope to call forth some as yet undiscovered and admirable aspect of his personality. You're not going to kill your puppy. Can't I even kill my dog? No. <laughs> what do I have? I live in Queens. We need to find those tickets. <laughs> Choke on them. Hello, Pace. I'm early. Hello, Denny. When will you do? Oh, I don't know. Hours from now. I couldn't wait. Mr. Dennis, one in. The Irish McCleary is here, Mr. Sebring. He's burst in, unannounced. Brash like all his tribe, hours in advance of his appointment, just in case you actually believe this was a real office. <laughs> a fellow is highly strung. What are you all dithering about? I'm looking for something. You don't mind that I'm here? No, no, look at this place. We don't stand on ceremony. <laughs> sit, sit. On these theater tickets? Oh! <laughs> What's the play? Oh. I'm told it's first rate. Don't be ridiculous. I'm not saying the American theater will never achieve anything like a European maturity until I turn my attention to plays. God, is that imminent? Why are you wasting your time on the theater? It's not such a peculiar thing. To... All sorts of people go. These tickets were hard to get. It's not all sorts of people that go to the theater. It's one sort of people. One sort who like to consort with their sort. Oh, Danny, don't say stuff like that. It's nauseating. The really big problem with the Broadway theater today is you always know what's going to happen. Why pay attention when you can tell how something's going to end? In my work, the reader will never know where the story's headed. Why give him that advantage over the author? What? <laughs> what do you think of this place? Havel. It's a wee bit messy. What are all these pages everywhere? It's the funniest thing, Denny. I call myself a publisher and people believe it. They send me things. Other people do? Yes. Well, unsolicited things, you know, nothing to... <laughs> Why aren't you at work? Work? <clears throat> these are working hours, aren't they? I don't know, I suppose. Denny? The thing about being one rung above ruin is it's not much better than ruin. You haven't... In fact, it's a little worse, because you always have the specter of ruin hovering about everywhere. Denny, you can't quit your job. Actually, I can. Not again. In life, Pace, you have to either soar or plummet. <sighs> it's this vast in-between that destroys the soul. Excuse me. May I speak? Are you too busy exchanging essays and aphorisms? Speak, Gidget. <laughs> this machine has come. What machine? Ah, uh, machine. <laughs> Did we order a machine? Oh, are we we all of a sudden? Have I executive authority? Can I dismiss people? What sort of machine is it? Indecipherable. Is it large? I should say so, large. Does it do something? Make toast or something? Well, I don't know. Why not let's test it out? Have you some slices of bread on you? Could it be a telegraph machine? Would you like to take a look? A little later, Gidger. I have something to deal with here. Ah. What could it be? Who knows? These merchants sell you things. You listen with one ear and... Denny, you have to get your job back. I can't, Pace. Why not? I said some things. Why? I don't know. Denny, Denny! Well, yes, I do. I think, I think I said them to make going back impossible. You idiot! Sometimes you have to do that. You have to make things irreversible so as not to be stuck in reverse. It wasn't such a bad job. You didn't do it. No, I didn't. It's very wrong of you, Pace, to tell me what I must do and need do when your own life is devoid of must, of need. I worry about you. Then you shouldn't worry about my leaving that job. You should worry about my staying. Everybody has jobs like that at the start. You're young. I'm ancient. I've already begun to oxidize. Denny. I was writing slogans for dry cleaners. My talent was oozing away by the hour. Pace, it's already the 1st of April, 1919. The world's the oldest it's ever been, and I'm nothing. 
What will you do? What will happen to you? You tell me. What will? Uh, have you at least read it? Yes, yes I have. Silence is so immensely cruel. What did you think? <laughs> well, torpid, senile, 25 year old wretch, speak! I liked this section very much. Yes, yes? <laughs> Around here, the story grew vague. I quite agree. <laughs> and this part, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. But. All in all, Are you going to publish it? In its present form, I don't have quite enough capital to cover the costs of the paper. But in its future form? <laughs> Who knows what that is? I do! You do, if you think about it. Also, there's some pretty rough stuff in here. For instance, this section on what you call alternately materna dentata or matrix dentata. Wasn't sure which was the correct Latin. Latin doesn't enter into it anywhere. It's the content. <laughs> we live in a hopelessly effeminate culture. Until we overthrow the mother and reinstate the father, Western civilization will not advance one whit. Yes, well, everyone accepts that. But still, this grotesque image of the teeth coming out of the mother's womb. That is a literal portrait of my mother in Indiana, John. No, it isn't. Have you met her? Either way, it could get us thrown into jail. Yank it, even... then. It's ten pages out of two million. <laughs> Which brings us back to the first problem. Does it excite you? Yes. Well, then. Then he can't even call it a novel. It's more a sort of anthology. My aims aren't narrow. Aim has nothing to do with it. You don't really aim at all. You're more sort of strength. <laughs> I believe in the novel of inclusion. In the argument between Wells and James, I'm a decided Wellsian. You're more McClearian than either. That's not yet a finished thing. Then he this isn't a novel. It's, it's a grouping of pages, not even a pile. You need one of those vivid words they use for birds and cats. A gaggle. Murder. A catastrophe of pages. <laughs> Not a single thing at all, but this vast, unedited, un unorganized, untitled. It has a title. Oh, yes? Yes, as of a few days ago. Twilight, a few days ago. Twilight, a few days ago? <laughs> yes. And what would that title be? The Violet Hour. The Violet Hour. Yes. A little switch? No. no I like it. <laughs> it's that time, that wonderful New York hour, when the evening's about to reward you for the day. Yes. That light. The violet light you walk between that hastens your places. Yes. It's nice. Will you publish it? But Danny, it's, it's about 25 books. No, it has a title. What's a thing has a title? It's single. That's not. That's a basic taxonomic principle. I, do you have any real information? Is everything you know made up? Why won't you publish it? I haven't said I won't. I'm not sure that I can, economically. Why is it only the rich who never have money to do things? I'm, I'll tell you why. It's because the poor are always seeking opportunities, while all the rich ones are limitations. You're terrified by the vastness of what's available to you, so you devote yourself to these fictional constraints, which, being unreal, are insuperable. And who suffers for it? I do. I'm just starting out. If I publish your book, I could lose my shirt. But then you'll have your sweater and your coat and all your other shirts. The money isn't mine. The money is not yet mine. It hasn't come down to me yet. A pittance has, that's all. I'm just starting out here. I may not I may not have the capacity to publish more than one book to start. I tell you it is one book. That's not what I mean. Then what do you No. There is another book and there is another book under consideration. Another book? <laughs> How could there be another book? Mine is the only book necessary. Danny. <laughs> Mine is the last text. It's like leaves of grass. After reading my book, people won't need to read anymore. They'll live. <laughs> it's my impression that people continue to read even after leaves of grass. Don't pin the failures of Walt Whitman on me, John. <laughs> <laughs> what is this other book? Who wrote it? I don't want to say. I don't want to expose this innocent bystander to your venom. Is it Trippy? No. Are you publishing Trippy's book over mine? No. Or Cuffover, or Vance, or Hartwick? God, 
No. Life is bigger than college, you know? No, it isn't. It's smaller. It's no one from school. What other people do you know? <laughs> I travel in circles you can't imagine. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? How all relationships turn into struggles for power? Nonsense. Nonsense, yes, I know that word. You taught me that word. It means exactly right, but we needn't raise our voices. Oh, what a crock. Princeton, strangely, was much more democratic than this shabby little room. You had money, I had talent. You had family, I had personal magnetism. It balanced out. If anything tipped to my favor, less generous observers might consider this a form of revenge. Dennis, there is something at stake for me here as well. I feel, I know, that this could be an important thing I'm starting. I don't want to misstep. You know what your trouble is, John? You have no spirit of ruin. No, I haven't. That's a terrible thing, Pace. That's the defining trait of a mediocrity. I don't want to be ruined. You should want it. The world wants it for you to be ruined and reconstructed and ruined again. That's life. Not my life. You have to publish this, you see, or else it's all over. It's all right to be down and out in your 20s. You don't understand. I know it feels you urgent, don't but it's understand. just experience. There's a woman. The machine is making a noise. What sort of noise? Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> did you flip a switch? No. What did you do? Nothing. Then why is it going tick, 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 tick? I don't know. Well, I'm sure it's just something. Do you want to come look? A bit later. <laughs> What's her name? Rosamund? Rosamund. Yes, it would be. <laughs> Rosamund what? Plint. Plint? <laughs> of the meat packing plints? That's the father. So she's the the meat heiress? American fortunes <laughs> often have How a How does she look? Is she beefy? The <laughs> 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 child. Where did you meet her? The tender line. <laughs> I met her at a party. And she's exquisite beyond anything I've ever seen. Oh. She's got gifts beyond belief. She sings and dances and paints like a dream. And I love her. You love her money. The way she laughs. Dear God. I know that sounds like fiction for ladies. So much of what you write does. But I mean so much more. It doesn't come through yet. It will in later drafts. Her laugh, then. It's tiered. As in lacrimose? As in levels. Oh. <laughs> when you first hear it, it seems utterly inadvertent, like an accident happening in another room. Then it's there, suddenly next to you, and you think of water, of a brook you stumble upon on a ramble. Then you realize it's none of that. It's nothing so common. It's not something you can sense at all. What it really is, is a kind of intelligence, calling attention to itself. Chime of a mind. A bell, the toll of intelligence, wise and slightly sad with history in it. That must be some laugh. It is. <laughs> she hopes she doesn't do it too often. There wouldn't be time for conversation it's, or to eat. It's only a few notes. And you hear all that in it? Because all that is in it. She's mine, Pace. She's meant to be mine. Are these things ever really inevitable, or is that just the way we interpret them, the gloss? You can't understand because you don't live your life that way, but it's true. Things have happened. There have been proofs. Proofs? Really? With that kind of girl, these things count. How did that happen? One afternoon, she took me to her home. To Chicago? She took you to Chicago. Not Chicago, New York, Fifth Avenue. Ah, oh, the pied a terre. Yes, the pied a terre. It was on the gazillionth floor. Ah, the pied a ciel. Yes, the pied a ciel. She led me through all these rooms. There were so many rooms, all these rooms to her room, like a trail, a famous trail. I thought there must be a map. This is one of those inevitable rooms that pioneers discovered. They're overriding again. I couldn't believe it was happening with this kind of girl. I didn't know what was what. I forgot everything I'd ever known. It was as if I weren't myself. As if I'd become the girl. Christ. <laughs> and then it happened and I felt married to her. And then? 
Then? Yes. There was no then, John. There was, Denny. I know there was because you're here now. I'm not sure what you're asking for. The moment when everything turned rotten and your prose improved. I don't want to go into that. But do. We'd fallen asleep. When I woke up, she was gone. It was as if- Hold off on the similes for a moment. My body ached. There was a sewer taste in my mouth and I was ravenous. The whole world- So you got dressed? Yes. And made my way into the street. It had rained, and the rain had given way to a milky kind of sun. The day was humid, and I could smell myself. Something rank. I walked until I found an automat, where with the last few pennies I'd have for two days, I bought a sandwich. I sat down, and within seconds, a bum sat across from me. Truly, it seemed that all... Any particular kind of bum? All bums are the same, John. (laughs) Not really. He had only two teeth, one perfect and one snagging. There you are. And he ate a soup made of hot water and mustard, and I gobbled my sandwich down and bared my teeth so he could see I was eating meat. And then? He asked if I'd like a little of his soup. And you fled. And I fled. And you thought? And I thought, this is what's waiting. The rest is unreal. But then. (laughs) But then. I saw it had rained again, lightly, and the rain had cooled the air and puddled the street with these tiny, skittish oil paintings. And I wasn't hungry anymore, and my body didn't ache, and I thought, yes! And I thought, no. Well, I thought, yes, Rosamond had happened. (laughs) Then clerks and secretaries started to emerge from office buildings and scurry every which way. And the daylight dimmed, and neon lights switched on, and people's reflections dappled in store windows. And I thought, this is the Violet Hour, and I thought, that's my title. And for the first time that day, I was altogether present. I had no money. I would have to walk home over the Queensboro Bridge, but I did not despair as I usually did, because I knew. I knew I would only be crossing this bridge a few more times. And suddenly I was inside my horrible little apartment. I stripped naked, got into bed, melted to sleep, and slept 17 hours. And next day, I arrived at work four hours late and showered my boss with obscenities. So you see, you have to publish me or my happiness is ending. <laughs> I don't see that at all. She loves John, you. John, you invented the world. Why don't you know how it works? If she loves you. There's a father and a fellow in the Midwest. Agreements had been made between them before I ever came onto the scene. A man named Armitage. Of the breweries? Yes. There's some hope of consolidating the family interest. Steak and ale. (laughs) It worked. (laughs) Yes. You see, the whole gizmo has already started up. I have to bring at least a promise of something or doom. Yes. I see. I love the book, of course. Yes. I love it. Them. It. Oh, pace. It will be, would be a gigantic task. That you're going I to. I didn't say but that. But you're inclined. I- inclined. Wait till you meet her. Who? Rosamond. When? In just a few minutes. What? She's coming here. Why? To clinch it. But then I still need time. It's done. It's done. It's a deal. Oh, I adore you. Am I early? Miss mm-hmm. Brewster. The fellow in the other room no. who does the introductions no, no. he was talking to an invention. I think you're right on time. You can call me when you're ready. And who was that Ethiopian apparition? Hush! <laughs> she was colored, right? Can you please lower your voice? Jesse Brewster. Jesse Brewster? She's the famous colored singer, right? The one with the strange style. The one who you elect? Yes. <laughs> How the hell do you know her from? Uh, she has this painting. They can have buying it. Is it of natives with enormous genitals? <laughs> no. <laughs> Look at you, knowing Jesse Brewster. Aren't you the man about town? Mm. Or should I say man about brown? God, you're disgusting. I'm just in a good mood. Listen, I haven't promised you anything. But you will. You have to understand, I'm implacable, Dennis. I'll get Rose. Wait till you meet her. Empire's topple. You'll be a breeze. Uh, the machine is spewing paper, and Miss Jesse Brewster, the tawny nightingale, is seated patiently on a leather chair. Wait, yes, me. yes, yes. I'll go. What's on the uh, paper? Is Mr. McCleary addressing me? 
Yes, I believe he is, Gidger. Is that permitted? Uh, yes, I believe it is, Gidger. <sighs> writing of some sort. Is it English writing? Print or cursor? Calligraphy? Rune? I haven't investigated. Why not? I'm a little Dutch boy. I'm stimming a flood. <laughs> Send in Miss Brewster, will you, Gidger? <laughs> well, why not? I'll be right back. Oh, all right. You'll love her, Pace. You'll love us both. It will inspire you. Miss Jessie Brewster, Ravenskin songstress. <laughs> Miss Brewster. Mr. John Pace Seavery. Have a seat, won't you? Yes, thank you. Gidger? Yes? Has Mr. McCleary gone yet? Yes. Thank you. Gidger? Yes? Do you want to take a little break? Maybe later. <laughs> well, I've read your book with great interest. I was hoping you had. Great interest indeed. And what did you think of it? Was mightily impressed. I'm glad. And really, you swear it, you worked without a ghost? Every word is my own. Well, that's very rare with this kind of thing, you know, very rare. I didn't know. Yes. I didn't know. <laughs> the thing about it is, it's, it's so very, very articulate. Hmm. By which I mean other performers, when, when they write their books, when rather their books are written for them, tend to bloviate, they... gas, on and on. I mean, lace and flowers, the real purple. But your writing's Quite wonderfully pure. That's because I tell the truth, and the truth always purifies a prose style. Don't you agree, Mr. Seaver? Please, call me John. John, and you must call me Jesse. Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I, I do agree. You should consider doing so, because I'm right. I see a style all frills and furbelows, and I know I'm being lied to. Something is being concealed. But give me a march of simple declarative sentences and no lie if possible. There's nowhere to hide. Don't show me a clause unless the truth is complicated, and the truth very rarely is. Shakespeare he was a terrible liar. He was? He couldn't help it. He lived in a time of courtiers. Lying was the world. What made it move? He was no exception. Most would say he was the exception. There are no exceptions to the times. You're a very grand thinker. I'm a very plain thinker, or else how would I know what I know? There has been a temporary cessation of machine activity. What's all this? From the machine. From the machine? From the machine. My god. What shall I do with it? I'll put it down somewhere. Anywhere? Yes, anywhere. Oh, but no. I would hate to send this room into disarray. I would never forgive myself if I create disorder in your sanctum misorum. That's fine, Gidger. I'll be taking a break. Very good. A strange machine has arrived at your office unannounced. It has secret gears that grind, hidden cogs that turn, a crude mechanical will. Aren't you even interested? Whatever it is, I'm sure I can handle it. Don't you ever. Don't you even. Quite all right, Gidger. Is Gidger my first name or my last? Why not take that break now? Why won't you acknowledge me? What poets do you like? Are you speaking to me? Yes. <laughs> and I wonder what poets do you like? I favor the strong rhythms of Gerard Manley Hopkins. Oh, yes, Hopkins. Reading him is like walking barefoot on a New England beach. You're constantly being pricked by unexpected stones. I'm taking a little break now. <laughs> Did you mean all that? All what? 
all that you said. All that you said for the benefit of that man, that gadget man, for the overhearing. <laughs> Did you mean all that? Yes. Easy, easy. The gadget will be back young in just... Boys I'm not a boy. I'm not young. young. White boy. I'm colored. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I don't think so. When I'm with you, I am. Oh. <laughs> you can do that. Yes, I can. Ooh, mercy. When you say that, you sound like an English woman. Oh, do I? Mercy. Glory be! Do I? Show no? Show no? You sound like Queen Victoria when you say that. After you get done saying show no, I have the feeling someone's been made a knight. Retreat a moment, will you? No. As a matter of fact, yes. You're not angry with me, are you? No. I just want to talk a bit. All right. Why? Because we don't much. But that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> we have better things to do. It's good. Just us, isn't it? It's the only way possible. People would wreck us. Oh, yes. They'd be appalled. <laughs> what my people would make of you. Of me? Oh, yeah. No, that's not... No one is ever appalled by me. Is that right? Yes. And why is that? I don't know. I'm what's wanted. You know so little. Teach me the rest. I try, I try. Teach me everything you can. You know everything. You've been all the places they won't I'm let me go. Is it because I'm colored that you love me or because I'm old? Both. If you think a minute, you'll see that's not the right answer. I love your book. <laughs> oh, it's my book you love, not me at all. I can't separate the two. I met you at the same time. Come here. That's not the book. Oh, but it is. Because when I smell you, do you know what I think of? Sharecroppers. Disgusting idea. <laughs> I think of those dinners you had as a child, those dinners you describe in the book, salt pork and a handful of rice. I think of the distance you've come, the leap you've made, the wonder of it, and how straight you've been through all of it. How you never betrayed yourself, never lied. And why wouldn't you? given what you've known. How heroic that is. You are. Everyone around you succumbing to narcotics and despair. Plain despair. But not you. Not you. And you're with me now. In this tower above a canyon with the traffic noises all muffled below. And you're famous. And a queen, an Ethiopian, a female potentate, grand and tall, and smelling marvelously like a department store. <laughs> That's the book and you. You are each other. There's no helping that, I suppose. Oh, why should there be? Why should there be? I don't know. Will you publish it? Part of me screams out, no. I don't want to publish it. I want to private it. I want to secret it beneath my pillow and have it for my dreams. Well, that does me no good. It's your life, the book is, and that's mine now. It belongs to me, not to anyone who's come before, or anyone who's coming after. But actually, it's mine. God, Jesse, what you are to me. Well, I like you fine, too. Everything in my <laughs> life has always been so sharp-angled and obvious and safe. Safe. Been longing for something <laughs> clandestine. Clandestine. And here we are, this secret thing, this great secret thing. I'm so obscenely happy. You young men. I tell you, I'm not young. Young men of your generation who fought in the war. I'm who have made sadness famous, and yet as a group, you are the most enthusiastic mob I have ever met. Do you hear me, John? I... what? I was questioning the gap between your reputation and your behavior. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening, Jesse. I was spinning on an ellipse. I was asking, why is it you wrecked men are also damned happy? Or is that too much to answer? No, I don't think it is. Well, then tell me. I think it's because the century's still so young, and all the worst things have already happened in it. Have they already happened? Yes, of course. Nothing could be worse than a war. And those who come back, some are full of damage. And you see them on the streets, like Memento Mori, and it always makes you stumble. But then 
you remember you've survived. You've lost your youth, but you've survived. And losing your youth, which feels at first like the loss of everything, only means that the world isn't the way you thought it was. But it is some other way and wantable. And so we started to want it again, and it's all hectic inside us because we never thought it would happen. The wanting, never again, but it's, it's there and it's better than any happiness we knew before. But life was innocent and uninteresting, and we're all fired up by it. And there's always this certainty under everything, under all the uncertainty that we've been through the worst. That it can never be that bad again. And so, if we're lost and ecstatic, it's because we've lost so much. And have everything to gain. And we'll gain it. And those who aren't dead are, are young. <laughs> Jess, I feel so sure about things. About what things? I don't know, that's the odd part. I haven't a clue what will happen, but I know it will be right. Well, you do. Somehow I do, yes. Do. You know I have no talent of my own. Well, that's not true. Well, it's true, it's completely true. I have no creative talent of any kind. <laughs> but I have a sense of who does. And this little bit of money, and I know, I know that it's all going to lead somewhere important. I have power. I have a sort of mission. I have this amazing sense of destiny. I, I can't see it, I can't figure what it will look like, but I know it's there for me. Is that pompous? Oh my god. I can't help it, it's true. Are you going to publish my book? Must you know? Must you know right away? Yes. Why? Because unlike the people you fought the war with, I am neither dead nor young. Give me and I haven't as much century to go as you, Just and I want to fix myself in people's minds. People know you, you're famous. Yes, to the 200 people who go where I am. That's more than most, Dad. Yeah? It's not enough. It should be. Not for me. Why can't you just wait? I have been waiting. I have been waiting and waiting. I no longer know the reason for the delay. I only ask for you to be a little patient. Tom, that is no kind of word to be using with me. Do you know how long I have been patient? Sorry, Jess. Sorry, is that what you are? Sorry. Jess. You sit here in this haphazard room that looks like weather's happened to it without an inkling of the future or an instinct to your name, except that you know, you know that no matter what you do, it'll turn out all right. But I'm nearly 14 years older than you. By myself, I can only go so far. And that is not as far as I intend to go. So I need you. I need you, John. Your help. The help of a baby. I'm not a baby. Not to even smell me. Jesse! It's not enough to be famous to a few dozen drunks in evening clothes who condescend to worship me. I want my life known. I want my life published. I want to nail it into people's heads. Jesus! Jesse, that's a pretty gruesome way to put it. Don't take that tone. Don't pretend you don't want to be shocked by me. The thing is, you see, I only have very limited resources. I can only publish one book. Oh, well, lucky for you, I've only written one book. <laughs> you have, yes. <laughs> oh. oh, who is that young man? The... The one who was here when I arrived. Oh, Denny. That's Dennis McCleary. He's just a friend from school. Oh, a friend from school. Are you fucking him? God! Of course not. God, well, you are fucking me. We should have answered your question. Oh, John. <laughs> Sometimes you go too far, you know? Has he written a book? No. I wouldn't say so. Because every word he writes would be a lie. You don't even know him. Well, you don't have to make the acquaintance of that sort to know him. He's all right. That's a weak thing to say. Don't call me that. John, tell me. Are you really a publisher? I am. I, I mean to be a publisher. Then publish something. It's so hard to decide. It's so hard to act. The future is in your pocket. And I don't want to mess that up. I need a crystal ball. If only I could know. But you can't. You can't know how anything will turn out. All you can do is what's right. And how do I know what that is? I am what's right. All your friends from college are liars. Liars, charlatans, no talent through drunks. They will have no trouble achieving publication. I need you. 
Give me oh, there's a no day. Time. There's no such thing as time. Is it all right to fuck a nigger, but it's not all right to run a nigger press? Is that Jesus, it? Jesse, you know what? You want my lover, John? I am your lover. You remain so? Is that contingent? I'm... No, of course not. But with everything you do or fail to do, you will reveal yourself to me. And everything I learn, I will assess. And when I know what manner of man you are, then I will decide if you suit me. can't run out on me, Jess. I can't do without you, you know? And I don't want to. I like most things about you. I like talking with you and sleeping with you and cradling your head. <laughs> my baby boy, my child. And I even like being your secret and having you for mine. But I won't be your lie. You're not. Oh, yes. That little thing that you brag to yourself about, the tiny violence that violates nothing. I won't make a promise that I can't keep. Everything you do is a promise, John. Good morning is a promise when you say I it. mean... I... Are we going to the theater tonight? Yes. Yes, I found the tickets. Shall we meet for drinks before? Yes. Then I'll stop by about seven. That will be lovely. And then you will tell me what you've decided. I got my ticker tape! Please tell the daddy what a marvelous greeting from a public house. Do you see what's going on? Isn't this the most phenomenal story? What's with me? I don't remember. There was street food everywhere. Johnny, you're a genius. A genius. I'm 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 let me do the honors. I'm Rosamund Flint. Oh, this Flint. is Rosamund Flint? Have we met before? No, I'm sure not. This is Rosamund Flint. I'm John Seabring. He knows Seabring. I'm Rosamund Flint, I just said so. This is John P. Seabring. So good to meet you. I'm Rosamund Flint. Oh, this Flint. is Jesse Bruce. So good to meet you. Have we met before? Absolutely not. She's the colored singer. Oh, you're the singer! Yes, Miss Bruce is very fine. I thought you performed fine. just last week. I didn't perform last week. I enjoyed it very much. <laughs> I'm so glad. You make that noise, don't you? That very distinctive noise. I never heard it anywhere else except for once from this woman in Fez. It's sort of a, a trill where the top note flutters high, high, high to heaven and the bottom note dives down, down, down to hell and the whole effect is uncanny and unsettling but altogether riveting. Yes, you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope we haven't interrupted a collab of some sort. Oh, no, I was just leaving. It's just that Denny and I were so, so excited about your promise to publish his book, Mr. We can I, help ourselves. Uh, I told you not to mention oh. it. Oh, I hope I haven't spoken out of turn. Of course not, but I must be off. There's some people I need to meet. Doesn't anyone care <laughs> that something phenomenological is happening in the very next room? <laughs> so, John, I'll come by at seven. Yes, seven. <laughs> With the painting? It's too large to carry. Do you have cigarettes? Yes. I'll get some. <laughs> Is he subtle, would you call him? Would you call him subtle? He seemed to want to leave us alone for some reason. Yes. I'm to seduce you. Uh. Oh, I don't mean with sex. Oh, yes, I do mean with sex. I don't mean with intercourse. Are you sure we haven't met each other? Yes, quite sure. Still. Yes, what is it? Uh, I'm not... Uh, perhaps it's that I've met so many of you when you've met so many of me. It's as if we've met each other. Why don't you sit? Why don't I, indeed? Would you like to smoke? Yes, I would. What purpose does he suppose it would serve your seducing me? Oh, Denny! Oh, what does that mean? Oh, Denny. I think he must have had a great many promises broken to him in his life. Don't you? I think when you grow up a certain way, when you don't gain admittance to certain rooms, 
followed you, but too late and with all the wrong feelings about them. There must always be something a bit off in your rhythm. Something that makes you never at ease. Possibly that's all to the good. Do you feel at ease now? Yes, ever so. But you... <sighs> oh, say it, I don't mind. You were brought up in a slaughterhouse. I was brought up in a big square mansion. Where big square things happen? All the time. On a daily basis? Yes, on a daily basis. <laughs> I, uh, I do like the looks of this room. We're having a bit yes, of a machine uproar. Yes, I can see that. That's what I, I like. We'll have an order soon. I expect you will. <laughs> we're marvelously comfortable with each other, aren't we? Yes. Your breathing even changes around me, doesn't it? Oh, I don't mean because I'm so bewitching. I don't think I'm bewitching. <laughs> I don't mean it gets all fast and puffy. I mean the opposite. I mean you relax. Because even though I was brought up in a slaughterhouse, and you in an Episcopal bell tower, we've come together. So that you could say things to me that would surprise other people you know who think, I think, that you're a mild and cautious young man. Isn't that what they think? That you're a mild and cautious young man. But to me, you could say things like, you were brought up in a slaughterhouse, and I'll know the exact limit of your daring, and that I'm being flirted with, not insulted. And that the flirtation will only go so far, and really isn't flirty at all, but sort of codes, I loathe. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very pleasant little rest for me. I've been spending so much time with Denny's friends. Oh, uh, they must be your friends, too, and they're not at all restful. They arrive in clumps and leave in tatters. And how do you find them? <laughs> Absolutely 80-proof. <80 laughs> Denny thinks you're a mild and cautious young man. They all do. The clump, the tattered club. <laughs> they mock you a bit. Do they? Oh, adoringly. Of course, you know that. They do that to your face, I'm sure. Well, it's nothing worse than what they say to your face, I'm sure. Sad thing, of course, is that they all feel tenderly towards you because they're so coarse and wicked and, and you're so sweet and unsuspecting. <laughs> Isn't that sad when we both know better? Oh, but why go into that? Listen, we're so terribly excited you're publishing this book. Denny may not completely understand what I told him. What are you saying? I told him only that I was considering Do publishing you his book. understand what's writing on this? Yes, for me too. Everything is writing on this. Exactly. You can't go around withdrawing your promises. I made no so promises you. of any kind. You are publishing this book fair. That's all there is to it. You've mashed your cigarette into my floor. Well, it's not as if it makes anything worse. Oh, what have I done? No, don't. I, I shouldn't have. I'm so. It's all right. <sighs> Rosamond. Do something? No. <laughs> no need. Does life ever become transparent for you? Transparent? Do you ever have presentiments? Are you ever certain what will happen? No. Never. Well, I am sometimes. I am now. Denny and I with the only happiness that will ever be possible to each other. Then take each other! It's not so easy. There's my father. Don't make a mistake about him. He's a very kind man and a very prudent one. All he asks is some evidence that something will become of Denny and then he'll give us his blessing. And if there is no evidence right away and you marry anyway? He'll disinherit me. Then live poor oh, John. if you love him. Love no, doesn't necessarily <laughs> abolish intelligence. Danny is a Catholic. Lapsed Catholic. His faith has lapsed. The psyche remains devout. <laughs> He's a great self-tormentor. If I were to give up everything, the burden would be intolerable. It would destroy us. And there's another man waiting in the wings who will not ever, no, never, be poor. And if things didn't work out for us, the specter of... 
Yes, I know about him. Oh, you do? This man, Armitage. Yes, this man, Armitage. And what kind of life would you have with him? A fine life. Do you love him? Uh, I used to think so. But since Denny came along. The concept has been redefined. And your feelings for Armitage. Have not diminished. It's just, they don't compare. Won't you publish this book? All I know is maybe. Tell me, do you think it's a good book? Have you read it? Pieces. That's all you, it's in pieces. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know what to think. The grammar is atrocious. You wonder how I got through Princeton. You did it. Those three years of grammar like that. And uh, most of the ideas are sophomoric. Uh, most of it was written sophomore year. <laughs> and he has a... Yes. It's like something I've never seen before. There's no one like Danny. You're in love with him, too. <laughs> well, it's all right. It's just a laugh. It's not great. <laughs> Why can't you wait? Why can't you wait and, and see how things pan out? Why must you run into the arms of another man? I'm not young. Something has to be done with me. Then he says you paint and, and dance and so forth. Why not strike out on your own? Why not be an artist yourself? Oh. I see. These pages are belonging together, and there's something very strange about it. Get your, I'm talking to Miss Plink. All right, but this is something you should know about. <laughs> oh, don't look like that. Don't look like that, like La Senorita Del Rosa, this portrait, this Photograph of sadness. I don't want you looking like that. It's just for the moment. Your father is a wicked man. He's a wise, an intelligent man. Those are euphemisms. There's nothing treacherous about foresight, John. It doesn't lessen the force of love or change its quality. All anyone is thinking of is happiness. Sometimes it's better to take a leap in the dark. Oh, there's no darkness available to you? Yes, I forgot. You have the gift of prophecy. I never said it was a gift. John, pay finger. I'm in the middle of something, Ginger. Yes, this veil of tears we call life. However, I'm staying at the plaza. There's something I must tell you. have an apartment on Fifth Avenue. These pages. Yes, but sometimes I like to pretend I'm a tourist and I take a room in the plaza. John, hush. Ginger. I can do things in rooms in the plaza that I can't do in a room as I own. But you have been busy with one thing and I'm a little talk, John. What is that? That life for me without Denny would be impossible. That's not I'm what I'm meant to return to Chicago tomorrow. If I return, there's meant to be a party where I announce my engagement to Mr. Armitage. Oh my God. But I shall not announce my engagement to Mr. Armitage. Oh my God. Because if you haven't agreed to publish Denny's book by this evening, I'm going to toss myself at the fortune floor when I'm by room at the Plaza Hotel. Rosamond? Today, Mr. Seabrook. Rosamond! John! Rosamond! Let me go, get you. Listen to me. Rosamond! John! I've been reading these pages. These pages are from authentic books. These books come from the end of the century. So? So? John, this century. <laughs>